Head up, Dad. First one up again. <laughs> a little bit loose. See, I'm still in my sleeping bag as well. A little bit loose. Let's see. Oh, he needs a... Let's see him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Out for the count. Are you coping all right with the pace, Lewis? Mm -hmm. I was at a big pizza last night. Mm -hmm. 16 inch monster pizza. Look at him, he's killed him. He's knackered. Hey, yeah, there's Grandad up, ready to go. Rearing for action. What'd you plan the day, Pop? Well, we get getting brighter. Uh, well, we had a bit of rain during the night, although I never heard it. But the uh, weather forecast says it's to brighten up from 11 o'clock and uh, we've to get blue skies and a bit of cloud the day, but less than 5% chance of rain at the BBC and uh, uh, app and also the Met Office app. So, what do you fancy today? Any particular route you've thought about? Now we go back there to Tabor's Kirk Michael. Yep. And then heading up to the same rain and then take the first one of the junctions off the taxi down through the glens. I've never been on that road either. Tabor's uh -huh. Kirk Michael. All right. Uh -huh. And then we'll just. Well, we'll get the map out and have a wee look at that just to check that one out then. Lewis, what about you? You got any particular routes? <laughs> Lewis just Lewis just tags along. <laughs> he's, wherever we go, he's going. Aye, he's doing well though. He's managing to keep up. See these young boys? They're no used to this kind of stuff up to and every day. Hey, Lewis. Mm. Well, look at that. Enthusiasm. Right then, so that's the day's plan. Right then, we'll get the map out then, pop. And, uh, and we'll see how that looks on the map. But you can see, a wee bit cloud outside, bit of rain on the window. But it's fine, it's clear enough. I see the blue skies over at the left. Pull, the, pull your window down behind your head there, Dad. Are people are outside through there. Yeah, are they? Yeah. It's sitting outside already? No, just they're keen. They're just standing in the blender. All right. Pull the other ones down as well. We'll let a bit of light in. The one on the left-hand side. Now you get the one on the left. All right, he's going to get them all down. Very good. We'll let some light in the caravan. They're looking bad this morning, they're all up, they're all keen, they're still lying here sleeping. we are saying the biters are burnt out. We've got that side, the one behind you Dad, your head and behind you, get that one a pull down as well. I'll come up with a wee look. Ah, there we go. Yes, a bit cloudy, but it's bright enough. Yes, a wee bit of rain on the window you can see there. There's a the folk outside. Good. Well, there we go. We'll start getting ready. I'll make a big fry up this morning, guys. You up for that? Big fry up this morning? Yeah, me too. Up for that Sunday yeah, Sunday morning fry up. I've got everything: bacon, sausages, <coughs> beans, and eggs, and tatty scones, and black pudding, and all the rest of it. Is there anything that you didn't want on that list? Black pudding. Black pudding. I okay, was coming. I knew the black pudding was coming. What about you, last thing on that list there? I'll have everything. You have everything. Mm -hmm. No bother. Look at that. It's right then. He's a slow starter, but once he gets started, he can go for it. Well, here we go then. It's a full boon of breakfast for the McDonald's. Well then, guys, has mum made a nice breakfast for you? What? Right, here we go. A full cooked breakfast. No bad, I'm looking after you boys, giving you plenty of energy for the motorcycling ahead. Well, I have to say, guys, what do you reckon to the breakfast, yeah, Lewis? Delicious. delicious. Would that they get a what score would you give me out of ten then for that boys? Five. A five? <laughs> Sir boy. What was wrong? Come on then, I hate to find out what I did wrong and what did I need to do to improve Lewis? What would you get, Lewis? An eight. An eight? That's not bad, I'll settle for an eight. Why have why did I, what what could I do to improve next time? The bacon a wee bit crispier. All right, ba crispier bacon for Lewis. And, uh, and oh, oh, there was another one. Uh, that's one point on the crispy the bacon. Scone was a wee bit, wee bit overdone. A wee bit overdone on the scone. Damn, I'm not ready for ready steady cook then. Right, Granddad, what the, what am I getting us out of ten for you? Oh, the hush brown. That was that was not hush yeah, brown. That was a toy <laughs> scone. That was not that bad, surely. <laughs> Ah, you're no, there's no secure on the totty scones. No. Ah, well, okay. So, am I getting a score out of 10, though? Hey, I'll, 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 I'll go for any higher than that. 
just not go any higher than Lewis. I need out of 10. Alright, okay. Well, I can hardly give myself a 10 out of 10, but I'll tell you what, it was pretty damn good. So there you go, we've, we've wiped the food out. We're going out to the coffee next. That was good. I've just switched the video back on. When I switched the video off, Lewis says I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Wait, what did you mean? Why did you give me an 8 out of 10 on the camera? Do you want, eh? You want to put me? Gee, we wait to bleep that out. I hate to find out to bleep out. Right then, so it was a 10 out of 10. Granddad, he's up to his score to a 10 out of 10 oh, here. Still You're still sticking at 8. There wasn't enough orange juice. <laughs> there wasn't enough orange juice. <laughs> right then, Lewis, so you, you're sticking on a... You, you're going for a 9 now then, upgrading me to a 9. Oh, I'll go for a 9 then. A 9, right, Granddad, he's waiting for a 9. You're still sticking on the 8 though. Alright, oh, yeah. well, there you go, that's no bad score, I'll settle for that, there we go, I'm a happy man. Okay then, well this is uh, Sunday, on you go Lewis, this is Sunday, we're just heading out, this is going to be our last day of the 2022 on the motorbikes, tomorrow, Monday, we we'll have to be off the site tomorrow by 12 o'clock by midday, so uh, this is us. Heading out today's route, Grandad again, he's planned the route with his map. We're uh, going to be heading into Kirk, uh, up Pret Lockery first to get fuel, and then we're going to be heading over towards Kirk Michael, and then Kirk Michael picking up the Blair Garrett to Braemar Road. Then we're going to take a road off of Braemar that Grandad has picked up on his map, and uh, there's a few arrows in it, so it suggests it's going to be quite a, 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 a steep ascent and then descent, and that's going to take us down into Blair. Uh, Blair Gowrie, where was it? Kirimuir, yes, that's it, Grandad. Down into Kirimuir, it's going to take us down into Kirimuir, and then we're going to come the road back from Kirimuir back to Blair Gowrie, and then from Blair Gowrie, we're going to take the road back over towards Dunkeld and then back up to Loch Faskill again. So that's today's route. All right, so again, we'll do the usual, we'll just switch the, the camera on whenever we get interesting bits of scenery. Okay, well we're uh, taking the, the wee back road effectively that links Pritlochry over to the Blair Gowry Braemar Road via Kirk Michael. I've got uh, Lewis and Grandad behind us. So yeah, I'm just, just saying there um, how fantastic it is to have this opportunity to get out on the bikes. I mean, Scotland is an incredible place to visit. Uh, uh, and as we know, we've got some of the best scenery in the world and I think, in fact, in some polls, Scotland has been voted as the most beautiful country in the world to visit. The fantastic thing about us is we get an opportunity to see it on motorcycles and I can't think of any better way to see Scotland than on motorbikes. I mean, if you happen to love motorcycling, then what comes better than being able to get out on the beautiful roads which were effectively, in my mind, built for motorbikes some of these beautiful twisty roads and when you get down to single track roads it's a lot less stressful riding them with a motorcycle than it is with another car where you know that both cars are occupying the fuel lanes and some of the corners it can get a bit scary okay it still gets a bit scary at times with the bikes and you've got to keep your concentration about you but there's no doubt about it um, when you're out there with a motorbike it's just a fantastic way to see the, sun, the, 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 the beautiful countryside and Scotland's fantastic scenery and for me there's that added advantage and bonus that I'm getting to do it with my son and I feel privileged to still be able to do it with my father okay day, day one effectively of our tour which was uh, Tuesday morning when Grandad took the turn and they ended up in the ambulance on his way to the hospital Lewis and I thought not only was that the end of the tour but we kind of thought we were losing Grandad as well so being able to get him back for the hospital get back on the bike and be able to complete the each day that we've done and we've not done short days with him I mean we've done proper tours um, our longest being 220 mile in one day and the shortest was about 120 miles but even that was quite a tough day because it was mostly on single track roads so we've really we've no we've no we've no be, we've no wrapped him up in cotton wool that's for sure and he's been able to run, run the pace with us and he's been able to run with us which has been absolutely fantastic So we're still on the road here from Pitlochery to Kirk Michael. As you can see, I've got Grandad in the front, Lewis behind Grandad. We're just having a wee chat there, 
saying about how as parents, as your children get older, they go on holidays with you, and you probably got them up to their 12, 13, 14, and then by the time you start getting to 15 and 16, they don't want to come with the parents. By the time they get to 17 and 18, they're definitely not want to go on holiday with the parents. And uh, this is where I think the likes of motorcycling is great because if the son or the daughter, uh, the wife, the husband, has got interest in motorbikes, it's still a great way for the family, or at least parts of the family that are interested, to be able to get a holiday together, and that's what we're doing here. And we're proving that motorcycling cuts across all ages, which I've always said. Um, we see people coming to learn to ride motorbikes, we've got youngsters at 16, and we've got focus on uh, my dad there, 77 year old, coming to learn to ride motorbikes. And the great thing about motorcycling, it seems to pull people together from all ages and all social backgrounds, that common interest, that shared experience. And that's what's been brilliant about this holiday that we've been on, is that it's pulled together three generations and we all love our motorcycle and we love getting out in the open Scottish roads and then coming back and then chatting about the experience that day at night over our dinner, whether it's something that we've made or, a, or just simply a takeaway and at Pitlochery we've got a chance then to, to chat about it and tell stories and, uh, and that's what it's all about. Put the DVD player on, watch a movie and create wonderful memories and then the next morning get up and uh, hear your breakfast, hear crack, plan where your route's going to be. Sometimes we discuss it the night before, sometimes it's made up that morning. And sometimes it's made up just when we look out the, the curtains and we in the caravan and we see where the, the best of the weather's going to be. And this is for me what makes this such a, a brilliant experience, being able to share that and to be able to share those memories with my, my father and my son. Because when we look back as older people, I think you'll agree that that's probably what we remember. We've only got our memories because you can't take it with you, that's for sure. It doesn't matter how much money you've got or how much accessories you've acquired or what riches you've acquired along the way. Without doubt, the most precious memories, the most premised riches of all are your memories and the ones that you look back on and the photographs and the videos and whatever else that you've managed to, to keep. So there you go. So there's my, my wee thought for why this has been such an enjoyable holiday as well on the motorbikes. Here we are, still heading up uh, at the moment. We've come off uh, Kirkmichael over to the road from Blair Gowrie to Braemar, and we're on that road just now, one of my favourite roads up over towards uh, Braemar at the moment. And then we're going to be taking the road off to the right, further up here, and that's going to take us over towards Kirrimuir. So I'll have a wee talk about here, about some advanced stuff. We've got the telegraph poles on the right hand side, covering right and left. Now you can't always trust telegraph poles because you can see that now they could just cut right across the road and take a different route. But they can sometimes give you an idea. So if you remember before from my, and he's up seen my video series, the 31 video series that I gave on advanced rider skills, I said to look out for the man-made, the natural features. So the likes of the now, for the man-made natural features, I'm looking at the topography of the land here, the, the uh, uphill sections, the downhill sections, um, I'm looking at how the road follows the natural contours of the land. I'm looking at the trees, the hedges, the bushes, the walls, tree lines, verges, anything at all that can light to the wall on the left hand side here, the fence on the right and how that goes up and then I'm looking at the lamp posts up ahead. I'm looking at the trees on the left hand side and how they're starting to curve back round to the right and I'm noticing now the, the gradient change, we're sitting up high just now, but I've noticed the gradient change and how we're going to be going downhill. So I'm scanning looking for the man-made, the natural features. I'm looking for any road signs and any road markings. Likes to hear the hazard warning line sign alongside me here, the solid white line along the left-hand side that's kind of broken a little bit. So I'm looking for any road signs and any road markings. I'm looking at the, the road surface itself. Um, I'm, <coughs> I'm looking particularly for colour changes, remember before what I said where there's a change in colour there can be a change in grit level and we must assess it fully. If I'm seeing the consistent colour all the way up ahead it means pretty much consistent grit, same as what I've got. Um, when I do see a change in colour it could mean increased grip, reduced grip, like in the distance and now I'm looking away in the distance and I can see it's a dark section, it looks fresh and then beyond that I'm seeing shell sure grip with a white vehicle, away way in the distance the camera might not be picking it up. So I'm studying the surface, I'm studying uphill sections, creating um, positive camber, so the downhill section creating a negative camber effect. I'm looking at the actual camber itself as well, where it's higher in the centre of the crown camber, and it creates negative camber on right hand bends and potential positive cambers on left hand bends. I like to hear the, the road sloping away, here's us turning right now on the road that's going to take us Glen Isla to Kirrimuir, and that's that newer section of the road that I saw from further back and you can see the new section of the road in the colour. And uh, 
I'm going to get an acro for the car. Obviously a few bikers taking this road as well, so it's maybe quite a popular road this one. This is obviously a different road I'm on now, I can see it's more single kind of track road here. But as I was saying there, I'm looking for the, the road signs, the road markings, likes of here, the black and white chevrons, the yellow round the outside here. So I'm looking for any road signs and any road markings, I'm looking in as I say at the camber, the slope, the elevation changes, the surface itself, I'm seeing consistent colour here, meaning consistent grip. But I'm also where it's that type of road with the little stones, where if it's been resurfaced, like say here, you can get loose grit and gravel, and that particularly tends to collect right there on the left hand side, funnily enough, just as I said it. Um, it tends to collect off to the sides, or if it was a, 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 um, a single carriageway road, it can collect in the middle where the centre line would be. And the likes of here, this type of road though, it tends to collect in the centre of the lane, and off to the, the left and off to the right. So you've got to watch on this type of road for loose grip and gravel. And the likes of here with the single track, we're keeping to the near side here, looking for any oncoming vehicles. I always hold out just enough to be able to get a certain amount of view around the corner, but not that much that I'm exposing myself to danger of vehicles coming another way. I'll always leave myself a gap to move into uh, and back into on the near side. So this is a different type of road then, this riding this type of road than the single track road. Likes to here keeping well over to the near side to improve my view from the right, and also means I'm away from any danger coming round. But on the left hand bends, I don't hang out to the right trying to get my view around, unless by hanging out to the right I am getting good forward view. What I don't want to do is hang over to the right, have a very, very restricted forward view, and then suddenly find a vehicle coming another way, and I've not got time to get back to a position of safety, and I get collected. So, special type of ride on this type of road. I like to there, Grandad, hanging out to the right, seeing the vehicle, and then moving back over to the left-hand side. So, if you look at my 31 video series um, about post-test motorcycle training and improving your rider skills, I go through all this kind of stuff. Um, where you're looking, as I say, at man-made natural features, road signs, road markings, um, looking at the road surface, the camber, the slope elevation, how to read the lim limit point and the vanishing point, which is like up ahead here, I've got a bend up to left, the vision's not moving at the moment, and the closer I get to that bend, the more reduced my vision becomes, the more I've got to reduce my speed. Once my vision begins to match, then I match my speed to that and maintain my speed as long as I can stop within the distance I can see to be clear when I remain on my side of the road. And then as I exit the bend, my vision begins to open up and extend, I can begin to increase my speed if it's safe to do so. Now combined with all that, I also explain all the rider skills that go with that as well. Um, everything from throttle control to brakes, to clutch, to gears, to counter steer, etc, etc, body position and the whole lot. And it's a sort of online course that if you look at all the videos in conjunction with the Roadcraft manual and you come along and do post-test training with me and improve your rider skills, it means you can do the sort of stuff that I'm doing now. Go out with your, with your family or your friends or your relatives and really enjoy the experience. There's nothing worse than going out for a bike tour and really being worried about somebody in the group, somebody that you think is an accident waiting to happen. And that person could be you, of course. The group just does not feel safe. You want everyone in that group to feel comfortable and to feel confident that these are all capable, safe riders. So please, invest in your training, invest in your rider skills. I see a lot of people spending loads of money on flash bikes, flash clothing, loads of accessories, and that's all well and good. But don't forget to invest in your own rider skills. No point having all the fancy bikes and all the fancy equipment and go faster accessories and bling hanging, dripping off it if you're arriving at corners absolutely petrified and, well, what's even worse is people that are no petrified but their confidence is writing checks that their skill can't cash because that really becomes scary when you do that. So anyway, there's a wee bit, just a wee bit talk about rider skills and rider training as part of the, the video. Now you can see here, this is the first time I've ever been on this road and uh, it's the first time my father's been on the road, He's, he picked this up on his map today and decided that we were going to go over this road and so far it looks pretty impressive, I have to say. Well, I've stopped here because this brings back fond memories here for me. I know my sister will definitely recognise this spot that I've stopped at. This is from Logger 8. There's a small back road, unclassified road, that takes you up to the Milton the Fanab caravan park at the back of Pitlochry. And in this very field where I'm looking just now, is where I, effectively from the time I was born, 
I lived in this field effectively until I was about, uh, must have been getting on for just over three years old. And my mother and father had a static caravan in there. My father worked in the woods with my uncles, the Birrells, and uh, he was a lorry driver and a woodcutter. And my uncle Tommy bought a static caravan for them. And it was placed right in the corner of this field here. And uh, that's where they spent the first three years of my life till my sister was born. And then we moved down to Octortool, just outside Octortool, the Walton Farm. And uh, we've been around about the Octortool area ever since. And the house that we see there, where I'm looking just now, uh, was Peter Stewart and his then wife Christine Stewart, who sadly is no longer with us. And uh, that's where we're actually heading now. My father and my son were heading up to see Peter Stewart who worked uh, uh, Mains of Killahangi, was the name of the farm, which was the most incredible view, and I'll take a photograph of, uh, photograph of that one. So I'm going to film this wee section of the road here because it's got a lot of sentimental value to me. And it'll be nice to be able to watch this back in the video, that's the house there. Where it was a bad corner, I've always got visions of my uncle Tommy flying around here. And in there's where he used to, uh, see the roofs off the building, and there's where he used to, and there's his car in there as well, sometimes old car, it's where he used to prepare his his uh, feed for his horses and as a kid I used to roam up here a lot on that road on the left there and uh, cycle along here a lot and on the right hand side here there's a field on the right and uh, my uncle had a horse and this wee paddock here as well I used to have it in there and, and this bit here are all grown overgrown now the trees but this was a lay by in here my uncle had his caravan in here and uh, in fact that's the old bit of the shed there that he had a, 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 an army truck back which was turned into a garage so yeah a lot of sentimental value for me riding on this bit of road my god the trees have fairly grown up they're a lot bigger now than they were then so there we go I'll switch it back on again when I get to the end near Killahangy Farm Without a doubt this has to be the best view from any farm I reckon in Scotland or at least it would take a bit of beating. This is the mains of Killahangy and the back road from Logger 8 to Milton Fanab at Lochery. And this is a view from the farm looking down to the A9 um, and the River Tay down below us. And as you can see it's absolutely beautiful. And that's looking down the hill. This is the farm here, Mains of Killang. You see my dad and Lewis talking to Cam Stewart. And, uh, Peter Stewart's house is uh, down here. Peter, when we were youngsters, we used to come out here with my mother and father. Peter played the accordion. You'll be able to see it in the video here, but the hotel way up in Pitlochery. Peter used to play up there, play the box, the accordion. And they farmed here for years, and now his son Robert is now taking on the rain and the mantle oh, and he now farms it here and I'm looking across the other side there. What a beautiful view, absolutely spectacular, it really is cracking. Okay, well there's us arrived back. Um, that's our final day, Sunday. We've arrived back to some glorious sunshine. It's been cloudy and overcast today, but it's never rained at any point. And uh, that's us back safe and sound. Today's not a big, huge mileage. We only did about, uh, I think about 80 miles today. It's been a fairly short trip for us. Yes, 81.4 miles. So guys, have you enjoyed your holiday? Uh-huh. You enjoyed it? Yeah, what's been the... Uh, the high, the low points for you, Lewis. What was the low points? Like that. What was that? Uh, that was the second day we were here. The second day when the granddad had his stuff. All right, that was a pretty low that point. Would you say that was a low point for you, Dad, Granddad? Of course. All right. Now, the low point for me was thinking I'd lost my phone. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> it had to be when we thought we were losing Granddad. <laughs> And uh, what about the high points? What's been the high points, the highlights for you? What's the bits you've enjoyed most or any particular aspects you could say? Every day's been great. Every day's been great, aye. I would agree with you. It's been a fantastic experience being able to be with you on the motorbikes and share that. Beautiful Scotland, we've had a cracking weather. Uh, it's been great riding the bikes and it's been great being away with you. And uh, I've absolutely loved it. It's been brilliant.
all right and with that we'll sign out for another year and hopefully we'll be back for another year yeah i hope so okay well you're with the uh the mcdonald's granddad's at the wheel lewis is in the middle and uh can you turn it around for me lewis Good. And uh, so here we are, we're actually driving, usually we'd be right the last part um, from uh, on the two road the last sort of mile. It's been historical that we've kind of filmed Grandad riding his bike the last two years. But this year of course, but the bike's in the back of the van and uh, we've just dropped off the caravan down at the house. The bikes are still in the back, but uh, we're riding, driving up now to the house and uh, I thought I'd film Grandad driving us back on the last mile. And uh, we've already given Grandma a wee phone and told her that we, we, uh, we're going to be arriving pretty soon, that we're just leaving the house. So uh, hopefully she'll be ready to meet us and greet us. Uh, so we'll switch off the video now and then we'll switch it back on as we're heading into the conservatory to see her. Okay then, we're filming us as we've just got the van. Let's head in then, boys. We've come back to all this drich weather. We've had beautiful weather. Um, all the time we've been on holiday, in fact, never once did we ride on wet roads or did it rain for us. Uh, apart from obviously the granddaddy situation. Oh, grandma's, grandma's hanging out the window here. I thought you were, you're that keen to see him. I thought you were going to, I thought you were going to give us a chance to at least get to the conservatory. Good. There we go. It's a pity it's such a horrible day, a drich, drich day. Ah, you brought a garden. He's a keen gardener, you know. He does what he's dealt with my mum and uh, my sister. There you go, he's, he, ten, he tends his garden down here. The rain that does the garden. The rain that does the garden. In we go then. Oh, Ah, there you go. <laughs> you missed him, mum. Oh, yeah. You were glad to see the back of him when he left. I was a bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, or the three amigos, or the three pikeys, jippos, whatever you want to call us. So you, have, so you have, so you've missed them then, mum, for sure. For sure. For yes. sure. Yes. Uh, you missed yes. mum. You missed. You missed mum, dad. Yes, I have that. And my daughter. Did you, Lorraine? You, you missed. You missed them. Always yeah. missed them. Yeah. Yeah. And the three years, all the time. And we, and we a bit worried that I wouldn't look after them properly. Mind you, I didn't get off to a very good start. <laughs> you know what? I, I knew that you were looking after them, and I knew that you probably gave them advice all the road along. Ah, well. Tell them where it's going wrong. Ah, well, so we tried. He's, he's going to get better instructor. So. Ah, well, we did, we did try our best, and every night he was in a bit of debrief with his riding that day and how he could improve. Hey, Lewis, he still, yep. would you agree, he still wants to try and improve his riding, doesn't he? His techniques. But we've had, a, we've had a great time, it's been a great holiday and it's been absolutely fantastic. Turn it around to me then, Lewis, and I'll just kind of finish it off a wee bit. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a brilliant uh, brilliant time. As I say, it got off to a really bad start and I uh, kind of thought that that was, it. It was uh, the end of the holiday. And um, well, obviously we thought, you and I, Lewis, that we were witnessing the demise of Granda that was that bad. And then he made a, an amazing comeback for the hospital when we were on... Uh, Lorraine brought him up and uh, it was really quite emotional seeing him getting out in the car and uh, getting his gear on the next day and we went out and we've been so lucky we've never had any rain apart from obviously that day in Grandad's situation but we never had any rain after that and nothing but really beautiful weather most of the time and uh, dry roads and this is the worst that we've come back to so I have to say fantastic already we're thinking about next year we're thinking about getting him a bike and maybe a I thought about the, the Triumph kind of Bonneville style bike, the street twin I think it's called. Uh, I think Sandro advised that one. We maybe get some more people advising us bikes that can be suitable. Nice bike that's low so you get the leg out easy and it's going to be a bit lighter, he says. And also, he still wants it to have a wee bit of performance. He likes his performance. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> We're still planning a trip next year. We're even thinking about taking the caravan up further up north. You two can use it as a base. Lewis and I will sleep in the back of the caravan and we can go out for a week. Caravan? Well, you'll be in the van. No, that's what I mean. I will be in the van. Lewis and I in the van. And then what will happen is... What about we, the four-star hotels? Well, you're not getting four-star hotels. We rough it. The, McDonald's, the McDonald's rough it. Four-star hotels? We, 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 we rough it. Five. In the caravan. Right, and you take your wee car. You can do your wee day trips and we get to do our wee jollies. There you go. So, if Grandad can keep healthy, that's the plan for next year. You up for that, Lewis? Yep. You up for that, Lewis? Yeah. Yeah. You, we've got yes. your operation to go for. When's your operation due for you? 11th of yeah. September. 11th of September. As I said, one of the blogs, Mum's had a wee scare this year, so she goes in to get her go, go bladder removed there. Go bladder removed, yes. Go and bladder a stone removed, removed this. And a stone removed yeah. as well. So, yeah. there you go. That's it. So, so you're going to be a We've had a hell of a year between. Lighter, yeah. Yeah, a stone will hit that guy. There you go, Mum. You always yeah, worked as a stone. So between mum, dad and COVID-19, it's been some year, but hey, we made it. So thank you very much and thanks for following the story in the blog. Thank you. John McDonald, over and out. <laughs>